Pete, you got no time. You're fine. I can just stop it if it's. No, I'll make it. Coffee, 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 coffee. Oh. All right, let's try to not table. Maybe not. Do that. That's a bad recording. Full recording shot. And honestly, if you don't sync it with this, it's fine. I can just edit it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 31 of Another Woodshop Podcast, the proud sponsor of Scott's Tots. We really want those kids <laughs> to go to college in four years. We hope we make it big by then. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's good. good. That's good. I'm going to actually turn down some of the gain here. Yeah. We're actually doing something that we've never done before. Yeah. We're What's holding that? hands. We're holding hands. Yeah, we're, we're in the same place, and we're recording at my house. So With two microphones. Two microphones. Two we computers. Got two microphones. We got oh, no turntables and two microphones. Oh, I was trying <laughs> You're trying to figure out how to work it. So there's three of us, but there's only two mics and two computers. <laughs> two turn well, there's three mics, if you count oh, me. Yeah, like I said. Yeah. Oh, man. Guys, if you didn't think that was funny, you will love Dan's stories, because those oh. are funny to Dan. Yeah. He, so, <laughs> you need to go watch my stories yeah. right now. Is that how you got 200,000 views on that one reel? You just kept watching your own? <laughs> Perhaps. Over and That's over. real good, guys. <laughs> um, stop judging me. We're not. We're having well, a great speaking time. Speaking of, uh, well, hold on, you know, real quick. Sponsoring the kids. I mean, yeah, you should. We should go right into that since that's what we were going to discuss. That's what we discussed doing. Well, and, <laughs> people that sponsor us. Yeah, I, yeah. I get it. That was a great roll into uh, the patrons who support the show and patronize us. <laughs> no, all right. Yeah, good, yeah. good words. Yeah. Good I word good. Nice wordplay. No, but seriously, thank you, <laughs> thank you for uh, to the patrons for supporting the show. They the whole show was brought to. Everyone by the patrons this week. Yeah. Uh, we really do appreciate that. Pete, don't crack your knuckles. Um, it comes over to the microphone real bad. Um, <laughs> no, just joking. But we, we really do appreciate all the patrons very much. Um, I guess it's not really fair to say that the whole entire show is brought to everyone by the patrons. They're, everyone who helps share the show is, is it helps bring the show alive. Really, but yeah, the, the community. Pa- but the patrons really go above and beyond. we got a cool community there. It's really fun. We got some good messages and posts going back and forth. It's really great. We really appreciate the patrons. Uh, we appreciate appreciate everyone, but the patrons, we're just taking it to the next level. We really appreciate it. And that. if you send Dan a hat, you'll get mentioned at the top of every show. Oh, oh God. <laughs> and if you send Mike oh, I didn't tell you guys 250 that. bucks. You no. don't speak until <laughs> like two minutes in, usually. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we got two new patrons this week. Big thank you to Jason Rafino of Skinny Dog Shop. And to Oscar Martinez of OSS Woodwork. And Oscar. Office fame. And, and from yeah. The Office. Yeah, we have Michael Scott and now Oscar Martinez. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to I Kevin can't wait Malone. I get Toby, uh, the hat trick. Toby, oh. what's Toby's last name? I don't know, he's like the uh, Strangler, right? It's the <laughs> Strand Strangler. Strand Strangler. It's just Toby. It's it's no, Toby's he has a last name. name. Dan, you have a phone. Get to work. I mean, we can look this up. I mean, yeah, we have the ability. We have the technology. Hey, I gotta have something to do. And we're stalling, <laughs> stalling. I mean, you know. Well, why don't we just jump into what's on the bench? What are we gonna jump into? What? What's on my bench? <laughs> I can do it live. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Uh, Dan, since you're typing, why don't you start? <laughs> oh my god, you're the worst. <laughs> and it's Toby Flinderson. Flinderson. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you you'll never believe it, but. I had to bring the walnut dust back to my shop and remake it entirely. Just rebuff it. <laughs> the whole thing warped and fell to pieces. <laughs> no. No! The walnut desk is no more! It's well, no way. It's veneered pin pine. It's no more in my shop. I'm working on some uh, barn doors for my neighbor because, quite honestly, he lives directly next door, so I'm trying to keep him as happy as possible so that... Our relationship doesn't turn sour because I don't, I don't want to have weird blood between me and the guy who lives directly next door. So, yeah, I'm making barn doors for his house. Uh, I've made two. I need to figure out how to hang them. I've got the hardware, but it's going to be a little challenging because it's a very old house, so things are a little wonky. But I feel confident in my abilities. And what else? I feel like I made something else, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, I made a shroud for my miter saw. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I, I can hook up dust collection. That's nice. Nice to have dust collection over there. I want to speak in a dust collection. <laughs> I don't know if I ever shared this in the podcast, but like I, I had a piece missing out of my dust collector that, 
that Too made much. that made all the dust like dump into the HEPA filter, which was really annoying. And I was like, "What is going on?" <laughs> it turns out I'm just a big bonehead, and I had a very important part missing. To be fair, that thing does take hours upon hours to assemble. To right. Be fair. I mean, it's a really long assembly time for those machines. And as much as I love my Laguna machines, the instructions for that machine oh, they're are they're, not great. They're horrendously bad. Yeah. It's really bad. Anyway, that's that's what's on my bench. What's on your bench, Mike? Well, uh, my good friends are in town. Who? Uh, you'll meet them tomorrow. I thought they're uh, driving from Arizona. They're driving from oh, Arizona. They're <laughs> from Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Dan, we're, we did, did we say we're recording from my house? I, m- in the show? In the oh, we didn't actually say it. We're oh, not, yeah, we're actually we? together. I don't oh, know if we're, we did. Yeah, we're physically... We're, yeah. It, like, we're all literally holding hands. We're yeah, in Dan the same Pete, room. I could touch Pete on the forehead right Dan now. Dan and Pete, we're forehead. at my kitchen table right now. We're recording uh, together. So Hen- the audio actually... That's the phenomenal audio. Yeah, the audio might be a little uh, degraded. Different. Different. From, just, let's just oh, say yeah, different. Differently abled. Differently. From what we normally... <laughs> We normally we have, we, we have pine quality audio. It's pine quality audio, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Pete with the one liner and yes. possibly the show title. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. Anyway, uh, this week's been um, it's been a good week. I got some a lot of administrative done this stuff done this week. I got a uh, I got three customer orders out this week. No, I've got more than that. I got about five or six. Some stuff from my website and from Etsy went out this week, so it was nice. Um, I got a big commission landed. <clears throat> Actually, the guys went with me this morning, yeah. and we went and picked up the wood for it. I'm building a bench. I can't go into much more detail than that because it is a surprise. Um, but but we went and picked up the slabs, <clears throat> and I yeah. basically loaded them into the truck by myself yeah, while you guys Dan just sat around and watched. Yeah, we watched Dan we lift watched Dan. Uh, Jeez. Full slap. Twenty four quarter. <clears throat> yeah, like legit. No, that's not a joke. That's not that's... a joke. Actually, one of them is probably closer to like uh, thirty 40 quarter. quarter or something. <laughs> yeah, it was like ten inches wide. I mean, there was there was some big beams, but we didn't grab all that. Uh, we grabbed everything we need. It's basically incredibly rough sawn redwood. It's not basically. It's exactly rough sawn redwood and some live edge slabs. So we grabbed three live edge slabs and three rather sizable beams. I'd say they're four by six, all three of them. Yeah, and they're pretty big. They're beefy. So I'm going to be building a redwood bench out of that. Uh, very excited. I'll be covering that on my Instagram, my YouTube, and on my TikTok. But uh, that's going to be what's but what's going to be on my bench. But what's on my bench is today we spent the day, and Rusty was here from Macbeth. We spent the day... Um, Luna's being cute. We spent the day redoing my dust collection. I unfortunately had to switch from... Uh, metal ducting to PVC ducting, but why? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, see the I got the P Flux three. It's a three horsepower machine, mm-hmm. and that can cl- if I were to close all my blast gates and there was a long run of the eight inch, it can collapse the eight inch metal. The, the eight inch metal, yeah. So so I had to go to PVC, which has a stronger wall. Unfortunately, it has <laughs> Luna's being crazy. It ha- and unfortunately has more dra- uh, drag in it, so it doesn't have as it can lose CFM a little bit more. But um, it's not going to be the end of the world. We've got pretty straight runs in it. Yeah, and actually, yeah. we have significantly less runs. <laughs> we have way less runs than what I had before. I mean, I had much longer runs before. So um, once it's all connected, I'm very confident it's going to work very well. Oh, yeah. Especially like straight to the jointer. I mean, it's almost literally, literally straight a straight shot. shot to the yeah. jointer. And it's like, it's no, it's 20 feet. So what's crazy is like at one point we literally stopped and we're like, okay, we need like six more fittings and we need this and yeah. that. And we're about to go to the store. And then we just like sat down for a second, yep. for a second for like an hour and reworked it. And I was we sitting down the whole with, time. <laughs> he was, he was supervising. Yeah. But we ended up with like extra fittings yeah, and we didn't have to buy anything. Yep. So It's incredible if you just rejigger things a little bit, you can make. Yeah. Pretty much, you can get go a long way with a little bit. So, uh, Pete did a lot of the figuring out of the fittings, and Dan did a lot of figuring out how to get to the bottom of beer bottles. And uh, Ooh, no, and I made stories. Made, Dan made a lot of stories. Dan, Dan, Dan really watched stories. Dan is so. the <laughs> podcast historian. <laughs> No, it was it was a really. By fun the time day. people see or hear this, they're not going to see my stories from today. Right, because they're going to be gone. Oh, well, Dan, photographer, videographer, you philanthropist, you philanthropist, <laughs> whatever that means. No, no, no. The um, uh, the um, but so you guys were here today, and you guys were here yesterday. We didn't. What did we do yesterday? 
We we can, oh we rearranged in the shop yesterday. Yeah, but we rearranged the shop. Yesterday feels like two days. I know. It's, it was, <laughs> we were like here for maybe yesterday six feels hours. so far away. It was so yeah. long ago, you know. Um, great song. Um, <laughs> no, it, uh, but yeah, we did that. We rearranged the shop today. We did the plumbing, most of it. We got the CNC shop mostly plumbed. I've got to get some the miter station done, which I can do that by myself. Yeah, yeah you um, can. Tomorrow we've got the maker meetup, which if you're listening to this now. Um, it, it's it, already happened. It's already happened. So you missed it. Even if you're a patron, I'm not going to be editing this until we get back from that. Um, actually, I guess I might be able to edit this tonight. We'll see. Um, actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, anyway, generally speaking, that the Maker Me Get Up will have already happened, and um, who knows what that's going to become, but we're going to we're really excited about that. It's going to be a really good time. So that's tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, we're going to get back in the shop and work a little bit more on some things in my shop. And then Sunday, before the boys go, we're going to try to run the CNC, get some things going, and just kind of hang out and have a good time. So, what? what? YouTube. Your video. Oh, my video. Yes, that's yeah. right. I worked uh, till 2 in the morning last night to get a YouTube video out. It's and got 50 views. It's got really bad amount of views. So, <laughs> that was so brought, brought you, you could go watch it. By technical difficulties. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was up late uh, putting that together. But yeah, no, I've got a YouTube video out. If you want to go see my YouTube video, I'd really appreciate it if you went and took, <laughs> took, uh, gave it some views because it doesn't have that many. Um, but but uh, I really did, actually, I really did personally <clears throat> like the video. I like how I assembled and produced it. Um, I liked it. And I thought, nice. it was, I thought it was a good video. So um, It was okay. Dan did not like it. Pete, what's on your bench? Uh, my bench, uh, I actually had the first half of your spiel, which is... I, my... <laughs> So, what just so you guys know, traditionally, as soon as I speak, Mike goes on TikTok. Uh, I don't so, even know why there was sounds playing. Don't no, worry about it. That's fine. No, go ahead. I'm going to hit the thing again. Oh, anyways. <laughs> uh, no, I had a fairly... What did you say right away? I missed it because of... Uh, yeah, because TikTok, I get it. Yeah. No, that was not TikTok. Mm-hmm. That was IG. I had go like ahead. an administrative week. I got caught up on a lot of stuff and it, it's like everything was working with me and against me at the same time because I got slammed with orders this week. And Good. I shipped out probably almost close to 20 items that, like, the night of, everything got boxed up uh, when I was packing. I had to box up all the orders. And there was literally an order 3D printing the night of, like, right before the flight. So at 5.30 in the morning, I'm assembling a square and, like, packing it up and putting it in a bag so that Emma can bring it to the post office. So those all went out. Uh, got caught up in some administrative stuff. Got a giveaway uh, running. Uh, set up a sharpening station, started sharpening. I reworked my sharpening workflow. I used to, I have a regular grinder. It's not a slow speed grinder. It's not variable speed. It not, it's uh, it's for meeting men and for grinding <laughs> metal. You don't, have the, you don't have the pro account? <laughs> you, <guys> have, <laughs> you don't have the grinder, grinder pro? Yeah, I have a grinder with ads. <laughs> so. Grinder light. Grinder light. <laughs> You don't have a slow speed grinder? No, so much better. Just slow speed grinder. <laughs> Anyways, so if anyone's ever sharpened a blade on a regular grinder, even with a really good wheel. Doesn't even make sense. Uh, it, it just burns it just burns the blade. It burns the metal and, and it's not too good. So I have this really nice but beat up old number three Stanley Sweetheart that I'm wanting to restore. So I got the shape of the blade because it was totally messed up. Got it cleaned up on that, and I use this utility sharpener. It's really d- designed for like knives and um, like I don't know, scissors and stuff, just sort of like regular blades around the house. And I got a pretty good edge on it. And then I finally set up this fake granite slab that I have that I found dead flat though. So I put a bunch of what's a fake on. granite slab? It's like faux. Gr- I don't know. It's faux granite. Is it really granite? Uh, oh, sorry. It's folks. Folks with an X. Though. So, oh my god. Yeah. Um, it's not a granite. No. Don't take it for granted. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm uh, leaving. Sorry. So I put some sandpaper down, did a little video on it too, um, how I honed it. it. I got it stupid sharp. I got it so sharp I was able to like, I accidentally like shave too much of my arm because I didn't think it was going to do that good. I was wondering job. why you're so bald yeah, all the way so up bald your arm. Look, I actually got a rash from like, side <laughs> scratch on something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got that sharpening station. So when I get back, I'm actually just going to hit all of my blades on that and just do a nice little tune up. Uh, and... That's pretty much it. I got some India ink in the mail. That's pretty cool. Can I add something real yeah, fast? Yeah, sure. Normally, when we record the podcast, you know, we're, we're doing it over Zoom or Skype mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. I don't have to sit here and look you guys in the eyes. This is I prefer you super didn't. weird. I prefer you didn't. I'm just going to stare at the table. <laughs> yeah, just look down. 
Ice front. That's it. Ice front. Oh, word. <laughs> I'm up here. Dan and I are actually sitting across from each other. Mike's off to the side. So no Pete's one's like talking directly at me, so, staring at my eyes. Oh, here uh, comes Luna crashing through the house. And Luna's here. And I got to meet Mike's dog, and I'm in love with Luna. She is she's, enormous. She's the I best I believe girl. the word I use was substantial. She's substantial. Which she's women substantial. love hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's a substantial stout woman. <laughs> she's a very good girl. And she's I actually... Sweet. I. Those of you that follow me know that I love shop organization, shop projects, and reorganizing the shop. And that's all Mike and I and Dan have been doing for the last well, day and a half. Well, mostly you and Mike. That's why you, you helped a lot. Yeah. I came up with ideas. I'm an ideas man. I'm an ideas man. They don't call him Dan, means, Dan that, Diaz for nothing because he's got all the ideas. Ideas? <laughs> <laughs> Dan that was Diaz. one of your worst jokes ever. <laughs> Mike left. That was better than you know. It's fine. I got one out of two. That ain't hey, bad. Kick that side out. She'll come lay down by you. No. Yeah. No. Nope. Call her over there. Yep. Anyways, uh, that's all I got. I think we should jump into some questions. Is that what we do here? Yeah, I, I think, think so. That's, I forgot how yeah. the order goes. Everything's all uh, crazy. You now. know, we should, we should start with someone that rhymes with like Schmarnet. <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you need to just kind of walk away from DS. <laughs> 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 all right. This first question is from Adam Barnett. Oh, I really. It's crazy. It's crazy. You threw that weird word out there and it worked. She being good. Oh, right. Luna girl, you're such a good girl. Oh, All right, sweet. she's just a sweetheart. Okay, this first one is from Adam Barnett. I need to write down the time because <laughs> I won't remember. Here's Adam's question. Hey guys, Adam here from Barnett Custom Woodworks. So this week's question: uh, I finished doing a coffee table and end table set, and I made my own legs, and I glued everything together. I don't have a domino, but uh, I used like quarter inch dowels and kind of just pegged everything together and I glued it and I got some squeeze out, but the legs up underneath the top, I had a shelf. They were so hard to get in there and sand. So my question is to you, what do you guys use for hard to reach areas to sand and get glue squeeze out and get everything nice and perfect in there? I tried, uh, like a little mouse sander, and it was terrible, and I hated it. Um, and uh, tons of other weird little options. But I want to see what you guys do, and what you think is best for sanding hard to reach, small, tight areas. Thanks, Daniel. I would totally uh, pre-sand and finish pieces before you put them together. That way, the glue is way easier to clean up, and then you don't have to worry about. Finishing over glue and it looking like dog poo. Yeah. That's what I would do. That's smart. What about you, Pete? Um, for me, I would either hit it with a chisel, especially if it's in a spot that's not really going to be seen. But like, like what if it's lip. plywood when the veneer is super thin? Then I would probably use tape ahead of time and pre-tape the joints so that wherever I'm, you know, I would clean up the glue as best as I can. The one thing that I actually get a lot of use out of, it's this little... It's almost like a painter's, like, well, that would paint. It's like a super flexible little spatula. Oh, like a little rubber thing? It's not rubber, though. It's metal. It's a super thin metal. It's like almost something like a... Uh, card scraper. No, it's not a card scraper. Like something that a machinist would use for, like, the thickness... The feeler gauges? Yeah, the feeler gauges. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that, but it comes with a handle, and I scrape the glue off with that if I can. And I have one that's just... It's a rounded end, so it's great for, like, scraping a good amount of glue off. Better than I find, that, like, wiping away. But if I'm doing, like... A joint that's gonna be coming together, especially out doing a joint. Doing yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Calm I down, would, California. I've used the pre-tape <laughs> method, and the you know because you, you can wipe away most of it, and then it's just a thin line. You don't have a thick bead there, and you just peel away that tape, and it does a pretty good Is job. Is it a of thin it glue line? Yeah, dude. The jokes line. are getting really <laughs> bad this episode. So we got a joint joke, and then doing a line. Great. <laughs> Mike's on fire today. No, it was a. I, I, I get well, the thin blue line. line. He made thin, his own joke. A, I made yeah. another joke. We're just bad, it's just bad jokes. The bad yeah, jokes all around. Yeah. Well, we well did this it. one's gonna bomb. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, that's mine. Uh, did you answer already? Nope. Oh, Mike, how about you? <laughs> uh, I was gonna say card scraper or like a square sander, but. The right answer is to pre-finish like and tape. Of course, of course it's the right answer. But you didn't say tape. It's to pre-finish and to tape. No, but just pre-finish. Okay. Dan has spoken. I'm so. a bro. <laughs> this next one, Dan's had 1,300 beers, so he... Uh... <laughs> Go grab yeah, it's only twelve fifty. It's empty. Go get another one. Actually, I do need another one. Yeah, go, 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 go. go, go. Hopefully Rusty left some. 
So there's oh, plenty. There's... I put fresh ones in there on the right side. Line and schlugels. I have to carry you. All right, this next one is from Corey Mayer Woodworks. I'm going to play his now. dotted and my t's crossed so i'm i just started dealing with the sales tax guy something i did i have cpa he dealt he dealt with my he dealt with my personal stuff and how he deals with coffee custom builds um find someone you trust and someone you like working with and um i mean we don't the reason we don't want to give out tax information is because we don't want to tell you the wrong thing it's not that we're like trying to keep it close to the chest we're just not pros at it and none of us actually do it like none of us are doing me and I mean we pay people to do it for us because we don't know yeah we don't want to yeah. dish out wrong yeah. information like, and have hey, you get in this? trouble yeah, and then you like, blame us four years ago, but AWP said and the judge is going to be like I don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> you're going to the slammer idiot <laughs> so, we, <laughs> so we, we, doesn't, we don't want to give you bad advice that's the only reason we kind of like don't go into it so we, we, we're just not gonna but um, you know you got to think about some things you got to think about what type of business entity do you want to have um, I'm not going to recommend anything you have to figure that out and decide because it's different. I mean, every state's different. Like well, in California. Why don't you answer your, like, because he was asking your experience. Said personally. Yeah. I'm, a sole propri- I'm a sole proprietor. I have a sole prop. Uh, in California, an LLC is $800 a year, and it didn't make sense when I first started doing this, and it still doesn't make sense now. Um, I don't have employees. I don't install in people's homes. Um, I'm not taking on... I don't have incredibly huge amounts of revenue from coffee custom builds so there's not a there's not a bunch of assumed liability from what i'm doing like if i build someone a bench and it breaks i'll take care of it but if i build someone a bookcase and it falls on their kid it's a lot of th- you know what i mean if it falls over and you have a lot of liability involved in that so if you have like these different pieces of fur- like there's th- different furniture you got to look at the the liability aspect of it, but <clears throat> um, I don't have the kind of liability with like a piece of furniture that the tallest point of it is 18 inches off the ground, that where I could be like held liable for something like that. If someone stubs yeah. their toe on a piece of furniture, that's not my fault, you know. And they're good luck it's proving the toes that. Fault. Yeah, it's the toes. That yeah. stupid idiot toe. Yeah. No, but I mean, there's certain things where you just have to kind of assess. Like for me personally, I feel like a sole proprietor makes the most sense right now, and it probably will for a long time, because I don't see myself bringing on like. Anyone I bring on to help with coffee custom builds that isn't my spouse will be in a like su- a contractor situation. I'll contract stuff out to them mm-hmm. and give them like a ten ninety nine and work out work it out with them that way. They won't be like a full time employee of mine. And you are actually registered as coffee custom builds as a registered entity. Yeah. In a way. Yep. yep. Coffee He's got all the documents hanging in his yeah, garage. Yeah, in my shop right now. You can see them in there. I'm a I'm a registered entity. I have my. Sellers permit, my resale and sales tax and use permit. I have all that stuff. I mean, I have the business license. I have, I'm registered with the state, and yeah, what state? Yeah, like you went full business. California. Yeah, yeah, I'm fully registered as you're, of. You're in California. Right. Yes. Okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, and well, anyway, uh, the sales tax stuff. Um, hmm. I won't go into some things on here, but the sales tax stuff, you just want to make sure all your stuff's lined up because you don't want to get like, you don't want to get like 10 years. Well, my CPA won't do sales tax stuff. I had to get a separate sales tax guy. Really? Yeah. He's like, I don't know anything about, it's just cause he knows it in California, but he doesn't know about it when you're dealing with like, if I'm selling something to Texas, oh. so he can only help me with California. <clears throat> so he's like, here's a, so he referred me to a guy who actually we've been talking to for about a month and a half and full disclosure Part of the reason I needed to get that was because of the CNC and having my reseller sales and use tax permit allowed me to get a partial tax exemption on my CNC. Hmm. 
So I was able to get a partial tax exemption for that because I was buying a piece of equipment for my business in, because it, it's over a certain dollar amount. It falls under some uh, uh, an exemption, so I didn't have to pay. I don't have to pay tax on it because it's for manufacturing. So it's just something. And again, this is something you're not going to learn unless you have a professional tell you. I didn't know this. Yeah, this exactly. <laughs> like, so this is because... So I got, I, a lot of these things needed to happen anyway, and it all kind of lined up. Now I have this guy that is going to file all my sales and use taxes for me, and I just pay him a little bit of money, and he takes care of me. So yeah. find people who know what they're doing. Yes. But yeah, if you're making enough money where you want it to become a business, you need to like do the things that make it into a business. I have, um, I, my wife and I have our homeowner's insurance and our vehicle insurance, and um, we have all that insurance through my buddy and through a very good insurance company. They've been very good to us. We also have a very large umbrella policy <clears throat> that currently covers all of my tools in my shop and it extends to cover coffee custom builds in a significant way too. So um, you need to think about that stuff. If you're like installing in people, we've gone over this before a bunch of times. Yeah. Like you really don't want to take things into people's homes unless you have insurance for that. It's like, you're going to deliver to the front door and drop it off. It's You're kicking yeah. it to the curb, essentially. It's curbside delivery is what you want to kind like of go every with. Every tool you get delivered gets dropped in. <clears> the <throat> right. Step. They're not taking yeah. it into your house because they don't want to take on the liability of yep. that. So a workaround for that is hiring movers. Um, that's because they carry insurance for that. That's what they do. They go into people's homes all day long. You don't want to deal with that. It's a lot of... It's, it's an added cost yeah. that... It's very unlikely to quickly pay for itself in a business for you to be able to offer that. So you just have to be tell people up front, hey, I can't put this in your home you and I can't install this for you either. Um, now, if you're doing cabinets all day long, you have to you have, have to that. You can't yeah. have, hire that out to movers. You need to be able to do that. So that's something you need to look at. So Unless you on, teach the movers how to install cabinets. Right. Well, and you could subcontract it out. You could subcontract yeah, out to yeah. an installer. Maybe have another cabinet shop. But that's that seems kind of silly. But... Um, you need to figure out what works best for your business. So that's why we're kind of like, don't like to give broad sweeping stuff. So I guess if we're just answering how we do it, I don't install things in people's homes. And I make a coffee table or a bench that I'm going to be working on. I'm not going to deliver it to this person's home. I'm delivering it to probably the place I picked up the wood from today. And that's their job to get it there. So, Dan. Well, I'm lucky enough to have a CPA that was with me when I started my other business, and uh, he's a pretty smart guy, and I trust him implicitly. So he's helped me through the process of making my woodworking hobby into a business, a full-fledged business, where it's really booming lately, so that's nice. And it's, it's nice to have a CPA. I can't stress that enough, and Mike talked in length about it, like, get yourself a CPA if this is something that you want to make into a business. I mean... That's some of the best money that I spend every year is on my CPA. Uh, aside from that, I do have a contractor's license with the state of Nebraska, and I do have full insurance, business liability, Inland Marine uh, that covers everything, and I have like a million-dollar liability ins uh, insurance policy that will cover me if I'm moving stuff into people's homes. Uh, wh when it came to the Walnut Desk, though, the, my client was happy, eno uh, happy enough and gracious enough to hire a mover so I didn't have to deal with it, which was great. I mean, you know, the yeah, less work amazing. the less work I have to do, the better. Dan's all in. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not to mention, we had to carry that thing up. Well, <laughs> I say we. I didn't do it. They had to carry it up a big, like, spiral staircase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no thanks. Um, yeah, I really can't add much else to what Mike said. He kind of nailed everything, but... Uh, for me in particular, uh, I have insurance. I have a contractor's license. Uh, it's, it's just good to get all your ducks in a row. And probably next year, I'm probably going to have to look into switching over to an LLC because I'm also a sole prop. Or actually, I'm a DBA. Mm. I'm doing business as. Um, I think my photography company is like an umbrella company to my woodworking company is how we kind of have mm -hmm. it set, set right now. So yeah, I think next year I'm gonna have to switch to an LLC though. Probably, what about you, Pete? Probably cheaper in Oma or in Nebraska. Yeah. yeah, everything's cheaper in Nebraska. I mean, everything's cheaper <laughs> in California. Fair. <laughs> than California, not in California. California's ridiculous. So for me, uh, I I always like this because we we really do have very three different very styles to a lot of things. So one of the, like is running a business. I'm a DBA as well. I do business as Peter Kapar. I do not have a registered company of any kind. 
Petri's Workshop is a, a made up entity that I just happen to have. Like a lot of us do on Instagram. So um, I find that I'm, I'm a lot more relatable than you guys to a lot of these guys. Yeah, just so you know. I guess. But, yeah. No, but in reality, you know, this is not this is not my business. I have a decent paying job that I enjoy that gives me plenty of time to play in a shop. Uh, I don't have currently any aspirations of going full time in my shop. I, I enjoy it a lot, but I enjoy the kind of having fun and working on projects and everything. And, you know, whereas like Mike loves commissions and deadlines and that's when he mm -hmm. thrives. Like mm -hmm. a, a, literally when he thrives is when he's under pressure. For me, like I like, it's almost, it's a hobby for me that I don't want to take full blown business because I don't want to basically take my hobby and make it work and be annoying and make it a nine to five and be stressed out about it. Um, one thing that kind of fell on my lap is I also am in the 3D printing world and I'm going to look down on the eyes as I'm talking this. Sorry, we keep meeting eyes. Uh, I'm in a 3D printing world and that's actually bringing me in a decent income and that's kind of hands off enough where I can just like, I design the files, I print them, I ship them. So it's a lot of administrative stuff, but not a lot of hands on stuff. And that allows me to bring an in income in that way and use that money towards my shop. Uh, you know, but then again, there's holiday seasons and sometimes people put in large orders and I'll knock out some cutting boards or uh, like a bench or a little table desk, whatever it might be. Uh, sometimes people just want a shelf. So it's just like, all right, here's a nice piece of wood. It's finished, hang it up. <laughs> and you know those little projects do supplement the shop and it's it's fun content to make and i feel like a lot of us a lot of us are kind of in the same boat of like we have jobs we don't have a ton of time we have families but we like to make a little extra business on the side like the guy said one of the best investments you can make is get a cpa get someone that knows taxes not your buddy that knows how to work h r block whatever Turbo tax. no an actual cpa and i will give you guys a real life exa example of basically my taxes last year i sold a substantial amount of stock that i had because we were just paying off some debt and i was like you know what let's just let's move some money around um and because of that that, that was a profit because it was stock that's just grown over the years i owed a lot of money but i was able to my cpa was like you don't need to register a company just do dba let's write off, do you have all your expenses for the year? I'm like, yeah, here's everything I earned, everything I bought. And I was even thinking like, all right, my, my tools aren't like, well, I don't have like a receipt. I'm buying used tools. And he's like, do you physically have the tool? If you have an audit, can they, sh can they see it in your shop? I'm like, well, yeah, they're all there. They're big machines. He's like, yeah, so you, you're fine. You're covered. And he was able to explain to me that like, like this hobby can actually help me. And it literally knocked off like almost two grand off of my tax bill. Because it was like stuff that I was expensing. I was expensing tools, um, supplies, certain travel or rentals, whatever. I was able to expense quite a bit of stuff. Uh, like my shipping. All of my shipping was basically expensed against my my regular tax bill. It was so a write -off. It's a write-off. Sorry, that, that's what it was. It was a write-off. So it, it can make a huge difference uh, doing business as. And most of us are bringing in hundreds a year, maybe a couple thousand per year. And Millions. You know, but once you like this year, I've got I've been fortunate enough to get into a point where I'm like, okay, I'm not like bringing in like tens of thousands, but like, no, I'm like, all right, I'm like, it's more than like a thousand, more than 2,000. I may actually consider getting an, or actually opening up a business this year. Uh, but my CPA was very straight, straightforward about it. He's like, you don't need to do it yet. That's it's costly. You don't need to do it. There's a lot of things to think about. Uh, Mike brought up a great, a great point of like your insurance. My insurance fully covers my hobby, my shop. I have a policy that fully covers that within my homeowner's policy. They're aware of my tools, the shop, and everything that's in there because I've actually given them those those amounts. So, because, but because I'm not an official business, I don't have to get an umbrella policy. So it's it's okay to do it the way you're doing it. Just make sure you're disclosing it properly, talking to your CPA, you're not hiding things because that's just how you get in trouble. Disclose everything. Yep. That's all I got. That's kind of like the answer. Story time. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, I fell asleep. No, um, yeah, I'm sorry, bud. <laughs> no, it, I think these are all things. There's a lot of different ways to approach all of it, so we're not going to tell you how to do it. Yeah. But yeah, it's good to ask how we did it because you can we can tell you what we did. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean we did it right. But no, it, I, it I could tell you a story of uh, back in 2012 when I first started my photography company. Well, I started it in 2009 officially. And I went full-time in 2011. And 
I wasn't doing the tax thing right at all. And uh, 2013 is when I hired my CPA and it, the government came after me and they're like, you owe us a lot of money for 2012. And I ended up having to pay like eight grand out of pocket because yeah. I was paying my taxes wrong. And, and there's no way to dodge taxes. Like you got to pay taxes. Yeah. Yeah. You pay, pay taxes. Oh, as far as like uh, orders, I do 99% of my orders through Etsy. Etsy handles all the sales tax <coughs> stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's that's actually a nice thing. Uh, but I am eventually going to be shifting to a website as well, and I'll probably have to lean, lean into something like what Mike has. I remember I remember talking to a guy on Instagram who's telling me one time that he he made like like almost twenty thousand dollars on woodworking stuff under the table. And he wasn't going to report it. I'm like, you're insane. Yeah, that's a lot. But he did end up turning out to be insane. So <clears> hopefully oh, they catch him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> <the> n- <laughs> you <Yeah>. know. Um, <laughs> so this next one is from our man, the legend, Josh the Dad of the Big IG. Hey guys, it's Josh the Dad. Yep, Josh the Dad, one of the Big IG, coming at you with this week's rambling words and questions. Now, after listening to last week's podcast, which was another good one, by the way, congratulations, I got to thinking, I don't have a question for this week. I don't know what I'm going to do. My contract, null and void. I'm going to get fired. (laughs) Uh, Freaking out. But then it dawned on me (laughs) last night, which it usually does, last minute, I posted Instagram for the first time, like, I don't know, all week, I guess. But it got some interaction, and it got some conversations going back and forth between myself and other people, and I thought, well, this is kind of fun. I enjoy this. But I started thinking about you guys. How do you guys deal with that constant social media, posting, stories, all that stuff? Is it, does it get you down? Um, Does it kind of drive you crazy sometimes? Or is it kind of like just second nature now, where it's just part of your life, and you can just move on? So... Just kind of rambling thoughts that I have. So, hey, have a great week. Talk to you later. Want me to start with this one? Or? Yeah, sure, Mike. Take it up. Take, take, take it away. You go, Pete. <laughs> sure. So, uh, yeah. So, I, I have a simple solution for that. So, with all the people reaching out to me, um, I like to just have a burnout once in a while. Just kind of burn out. Takes a nice little yeah. burnout. He takes, he takes, a, a he takes his out. firebird to the just, cul-de-sac. Yeah, <laughs> just mentally shut down and just like turn off Instagram, stop posting, stop answering, and uh, and then catch up frantically for like two or three days. No, but it, it can be a lot. Uh, I'm I'm not even well, I'm not half as large as uh, Mike's account, and Dan's closely behind uh, Mike. Like these th- these guys are large accounts to me, still. And you better believe it. But like. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm just shy of 14K, and I get a lot of engagement. Like, we probably all, I mean, Mike gets like hundreds of messages a day, I feel like. Yes, I right? Yeah. Dan gets cl- close to that as well. I get at definitely least like... Five. Five, at least five. At least <laughs> five hundred? Five messages. Five messages. Um, I definitely get like dozens of messages a day, and it it's a lot of time out of your day. You know, and then there's people like, we, we like to just go on Instagram and actually follow up on the people we like and follow and have relationships with. So it takes a, a lot of time. And But we've also gotten to that point where this is more than just, like, Instagram. It's To us, it's, you know, we, we do the podcast. We want to stay on top of the community. You want to be involved with it. So it's it's not that it's a job, but it's, it, but it's kind of a job. You know, like, it's a commitment. It's That's what it is. It's, it's a commitment a we've made... Um, an unofficial commitment we've made with everyone. You know, if we don't interact with the patrons and uh, we like sharing the stories you guys tag us in, like it makes, every time somebody tags me a story, it makes me feel really special. I don't care if it's, you know, a coffee with coffee or them asking a question or something silly. Like, that's cool. Like you thought to write my name in when you were tagging someone. That's, you know, that's very thoughtful. So it's, it's a lot. But the thing that keeps me going is, the same thing it's the community it's the people taking their time to shout us out ask us questions uh make us smile or laugh or comment like we have people like while we're all hanging out um i'll call her out i don't care adrian vita was like straight up just shouting us out like they're about to do a live like as five seconds before we're like we're gonna do a live and she's on top of it and then she's doing a story about it and we're resharing it and it's like this community is just kind of and she's just one example of people just being awesome sorry if you guys are hearing uh, an earthquake. It's Luna snoring underneath the table. I told you guys. That's, that's fun. It's amazing. But the yeah, I, I do occasionally burn out. I like to, if I, when I get overwhelmed, I just kind of like shut down. I, that's I don't deal well with that. So I just like shut down. I just need to take a day off. Um, 
but then I try to get back into it. I try to interact with everyone and try to catch up on stories because that's what keeps me going. That's the only reason I'm on there is because I genuinely love this community and these two fools mm. and Luna. What about you, Dan? Uh, it is kind of like a job in and of itself. And we've, we've talked about that before on, mm. he, on here, I believe. But, you know, uh, I do enjoy it. I do get burnt out here and there. Um, but, you know, you just got to get back up on that horse and keep at it because it is kind of like a job, but, man, you really nailed it on the head by, by saying it's a commitment, you know. That's a good way to put it, yeah. It's a really great way to put it. Uh, I'm married to my wife not because it's a job, but because I made a commitment to her, and I love her. And IG is kind of like the same way. Like, I, you know, I got a commitment to IG, and I kind of love it. So. Till death do us part. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just like anything else. You know, you get a little burnout, you take a little break, and you come back. Mike, Mike doesn't take breaks, but we'll see what he has to say. Yeah, I'll, I don't get, I don't get like, uh, like sometimes I'll just be like, I need to be off Instagram for the night, and I'll get in, I'll get home like after a long day at work, and I'll just be like, I'm gonna go in the shop and just, I'm not recording anything, I'm not answering messages, I'm not doing stories. I'll still do stories, even though I tell myself I won't because I'm addicted, but I'll go do some stories, but I won't really respond to anyone's responses. Um, and that's kind of the extent of my burnout. I don't really take breaks, like Dan said. But, <clears throat> I mean, you kind of just get out what you put in. And I put a lot in. Well, and your metrics show that. I mean, well, I mean, I'm, you get a lot of engagement. I get a lot saying. of engagement. but And it's kind of that. I mean, we were actually just having this conversation, I guess, last week. But, I mean, sometimes the, you know, <clears throat> this is going to sound, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm bragging because I'm not. I'm really not. He's totally bragging. I'm Come not on. bragging. Go ahead, flex. Come on. I'm not trying to flex. I'm really not. Yeah, I mean, I'll get like a mad. post. No, I'm not mad. It's just like, I get a post. I'll have a post that has a lot of comments and I'm like, I don't want to not respond to all of them because it's a blessing to get that many comments from people that that many people will care enough to make a comment on my post. Like I don't even, it's crazy. So I don't want to be like, I don't want to ever be like, Cool. I don't want to be like, drop the one line reply. I try to really get, I mean, if someone drops like an emoji, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to even respond like. to that. Like, I'll just like and move on. But like, if someone like says, hey, what do you think about this? I'm going to like try to give them a good full answer, you know? Because um, it means a lot to me. So, and, but, and it's hard because I'll get, I mean, I get, I get over a hundred messages a day and I get, you know, some days I get more than 300 messages a day. And um, it gets a lot sometimes. It's a lot. It's a lot. And, but I do legitimately love it. So, um, and it's not a complaint, but it, it is a lot. And I am I do have a full-time job. And I'm trying to grow a business, which is two different jobs. And Instagram and content creation is a job. And I feel like saying to people, yeah, I have three jobs. And, but you can't ever really explain to people who don't understand how, how could Instagram be a job? Because they don't understand. But if I can say it to Dan and Pete or people who do this, but it's a lot of work. Like it's, it's a, a lot, lot of work. work. I was we got done last night and I was literally up till two in the morning <clears throat> putting out a YouTube video because I haven't put one out in six weeks. And I and I want to be successful on YouTube. And the only way you're gonna be successful at anything is by putting in the time. And there's um, peak times you got there's deadlines that Yeah, there's, there's days that I have. I know that I feel for me work best for me and I couldn't get the video out after today. Well, then the video bombed. My, my YouTube video today is a complete bomb for me, and it's frust- And Josh was asking, you know, what's the, the frustrating side of it? That's disappointing. You put in a lot of work, and a YouTube video is a lot of work. It's not just like, oh, I filmed this thing, I edited this thing. The voiceover, for me, takes a lot out of me. It's a lot to do. I want to make it sound right and sound good, and then you got to put a bunch of information in the description, and then you get it out, and, and then when it bombs, it's like, man, that really sucks. But... You know, and then we weren't going to talk about it, but Instagram's being super weird for us right now, for the three of us and, and other people we're observing. Um, and it's like there's numbers on posts that I'm just like, what? This is terrible. They don't make sense. And I don't even like talking about this stuff because literally no one cares. Like, I, I know no one cares about how my posts are doing, but it's all because about Josh, it's not specifically about that. Like, because Josh asked, like, is there like a downside? Yeah. It sucks when you spend time of, you know, part of your day to try to put out a piece of entertainment for someone and less than one-tenth of the people who normally watch it, watch it. Um, True. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, someone's like, oh, well, that's, I wish I could get that number. And it's like, 
that's cool. You know, I'm really that's not. You know, I wasn't saying it to make your number feel bad. I'm saying it because this is a tenth of what I normally get, and that's very weird. And then when it happens two days in a row, you're like, "What is happening?" And then you start to go, "Like, is this even worth it anymore?" But then it's like, "Eh, it's always worth it because it's not about the numbers. It's about the relationship and engagement with people." So I'm looking at my like it's weird. Like when you go and I have a post, like the last couple days are like ten percent of the size. Or uh, views they normally get, but I still have a couple hundred messages today. I'm like, how does that even make sense? The the engagement is still super still high there. on the DM level, and on I have even the posts even have a lot of comments on them, um, but the views don't make sense. So then you have to just be like, okay, Instagram does weird things sometimes, and that's probably what's going on. So you just kind of have to like not let it get to you, but it's sometimes really hard. I mean, it's two days in a row of garbage results of your hard work. The numbers are like a direct reflection like, of your work. Well, direct reflection of your work, and it's a you know it, it tickles your whatever. It feelings, feels good for anything to good. do well. It, you yeah. want to do well. Yeah. And the thing is, like, you post on Instagram so that you can get those likes, so you can feel good about it, and then engage with the community it makes you feel even better. And when that that little reward system is in there, you're just posting because the thing is, let's be real, we put in a lot of work into this. Mm-hmm. I, I, Especially Mike, like put we put in a lot of work in Instagram and YouTube and all this content, and you know, no one's paying us for this really. Like it's, you know, there's been some fringe benefits. Obviously, but we it's have not, lucrative relationships in places, we have but relationships yeah. that we form because we've put in the work. But if you like really look at like the dollar value on a lot of the stuff, especially as you're growing early on, it's like you know we're it's a lot of free work, free labor that you're doing, but we enjoy it. There's like there's a relationship. There's that benefit of it. But it's it's, it's like, like any hobby. Yeah, it's like people it's, do it it's because they love. Hobby. It's anything. You gotta get something you, out of it. You want something. Like, I mean, nothing. It's anything. You, know, it's, you just you, you also want growth. You want to keep growing so that you can keep putting out better content. Yeah, you know, and I don't know how I want to broach this, but like, there's a lot of like, oh, this person only does it for the follows, and there are legitimately per- people yeah. you can tell who only do it for the follows. But it feels really good when my account, account grows. Yeah, when it it grows. feels good for anyone when their account grows. And no, I don't think people need to shame people for that. I don't think that's really fair. Yeah. Um, there's people who just do it for follows, and they'll they'll buy them or they'll do whatever for follows. Um, they'll I mean they'll just do it. That's the wrong reason to do. It. That's not the reason to do it. I mean yeah. that that literally the number means nothing. It's the as I get more followers, I get to meet. There's like, so if you look at these numbers, you got whatever. How many people you have following you? Like one to five percent of those people are like hyper engaged, and you get really cool relationships with these people. Um, you know, Adrian, there's, there's so many people. That's how we met. Yeah. Matt, Van Bl- there's, I, I could go down this whole long, yeah. there's a, such a long list of people. I go, oh, this person's saying hi. I want to talk to this person because they're hyper engaged. I would have never met this person if I had not been on Instagram. Yeah. Um, not that I, you know, we're not like having dinner or something, but I could have a nice conversation with people. That's the social aspect of social media that I legit really enjoy. Like I really enjoy that part of social media. I mean, me and you talk basically. We met. Like, we wouldn't have met. Ago. We wouldn't have met. This podcast we wouldn't have happened if we wouldn't have done day. that. So I mean, it's this wouldn't be a yeah. thing, and we wouldn't have this, you know, three way marriage we're in with without <laughs> Instagram. I mean, I don't know if we've ever brought that up. On I don't the know podcast. if we have. <laughs> yeah, we haven't. Yeah, I mean, that's what we yeah. call it. We call three it three way marriage. But I mean, it's just like uh, you know, the social media, the social side of the social media, <laughs> it really does matter. To, I know to these guys and to me. It really is important. We really do love the community. It's, it's about the right. relationships. Yeah. I mean, so thing. When you get to when you get to fifty K, hundred K, which I know your goals and you're gonna get to them, you're still gonna be commenting on certain people's comments on your thing because Always. you have relationships with them. Yeah. But then the rest of them you might go through and just like 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 Yeah. Like, because you're you got, not gonna be able to just physically you will not well, be able to do it. Here's the thing anything. though, I mean, and this is not flex, <laughs> but I get more comments than some of the really big accounts. Fair. I mean, they don't get 200 comments. Well, it's because your content's fire. Well, no, it has nothing to do with that. It's because <laughs> they're, I'm engaged more. You, you are very engaged. I so, thought you were married. <laughs> ah, yeah. So, but I mean, you look at, I mean, I don't want to call it any account because they're all, there's a lot of really great guys. They're all really great. In a, um, but, I mean, these guys will have like 400, 500,000 views, 30 comments. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, that doesn't not make sense to me. It's just what it is. They get a lot of views. They have a big influence and um, they have a big influence. They're a big account. 
They're mar- far bigger account than I am. Two, maybe 10, 20 times larger than I am. Um, but they'll have 30 comments, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know why they can't comment on every single one. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, why can't you just comment on every single one? It's just 30, yeah. But at the same time, I also don't know what they're doing. Like, I don't know what are the things they have going Excuse on. Excuse me while I go respond to everybody. But I, but, I don't know, but I don't know what are the things they have going on. They like, might, I don't yeah. know what they have. My, they might also have a YouTube video they're trying to get out that night as well. They might have a brand deal they're trying to lock up. They might have a project they're trying to do. I don't know that. So everybody's I can't. Different. Everybody's. Everything's yeah. relative. Everything's relative. So, that's I mean, um, that's kind of my thought. I'm I mean, kind of beating a dead horse. But, like, yeah, it's a We thing. are, and it's just a lot to it. It's nuanced, and it's also not. But We want to respond to every single person. We want to engage with everyone. Even if somebody, like, it, emotes to my story i try to send him something back like oh yeah that was great well that was fun or a smiley face back or something i don't know yeah i try to engage back i don't just try to like like it you know but it, sometimes it gets to that point where i feel like, bad over here yeah sometimes it gets to that point where i'm like oh, i gotta i gotta like this i mean there's plenty of bigger accounts that i respond to all the time and i i get the seat they saw it or i'll get a like and that's it no response hmm. yeah i don't know but you know what it's about halfway through the show why yeah, that do... was three. What Dan, that was, that was why don't do yeah. Dan, why don't we do the giveaway? Yes, <laughs> let's do the we giveaway. The uh, what week are we on? 16. 17, right? 17. I this 16. one, 19? 20. The no, last week was 15, I think. I think I think the thing no, in there is 16. I'll pull it up right now. We're on the teens. Oh, I don't have it. Up. So, uh, last week we gave... We're correct. on 17, I'm yep. right. Okay, we're on 17. Last week was week 16. Uh, sponsored by Macbeth Hardwood, as we do every week. Thank you, Macbeth. Thank you, Macbeth. Um, last week we gave away a Starbond package that included some CA glues and accelerator. Thin, medium, and thick. Yes. And the winner of that package was Fudge? Fudge. Uh, Fudge I, Kimball. Fudge is just uh, From Meg Shark 19? Meg yeah, Shark 19. 19. And I've already messaged him or her. It's a it's, it's him. him. It's okay. A him. All right. Anyway, uh, this week we are giving away sponsored by Macbeth, an Amana PR ten forty ten inch forty two saw blade. I believe that you could use that in your table saw yeah. or yeah. your miter saw. Mm-hmm. Ten inch miter saw. That'd be a. It'd probably be better shield. off in your table saw. That'd be a, gen- a combo blade. Probably a combo blade. Is it's a the, nice blade. Is that the Mamba? Nah, it just says mm-hmm. Amana. Just says Amana. Okay. It's a pretty nice standard blade. I mean, it's a nice table saw yeah. blade. Yeah. It's, you know, it's valued at like $70. So it's a it's pretty good, it's gonna nice, be nice blade. It's one of those like, it's, it's nice a blade. nice, it's like one of the thicker yeah. nice carbide blades. It's not just some, your run of the mill one. So uh, this week's code phrase, I wanted to go with pine quality audio. I think we, Is that going to be the, the show title? I don't know. We can figure out something for yeah. the show title. It's fine. We can go with that. Yeah. Pine quality audio. I like it. We, we drop pine all the time. Yeah, pine quality audio. I like it. I'll Code phrase. Phone. Send it to us in a DM at another Woodshot podcast on our IG or email it to us to another Woodshot podcast at gmail.gov. Kizom. Dot <laughs> 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 um, Anyway, that's it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Macbeth. Back Thank to the show. Guys. Thank you, all you. Uh, this next question is from Matt Marol. He's at Surf Pig. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, y'all. How's it going? I'm calling in with a couple of big questions here for you. I'm hoping you can give me some thoughts and opinions and some advice. I'm a beginning woodworker here. I'm working in a 12 by 20 shed, and I'm looking to get it outfitted to do a little bit of woodwork in here. I'm debating right now on insulation and paneling. Or just sticking with a window unit and a heater and hoping I make it through the winters and summers okay. So I was curious what your opinion is on that. And also, since I'm going to be outfitting my shop with all new tools here, table saw, jointer, planer, new sanders, the whole nine yards basically. And since I'm working in such a small space, I'm looking at a lot of benchtop devices, benchtop joiner, and also looking at the some of the combo tools like the Jet Combo Jointer Planer. So I was curious what y'all's thoughts and opinions were on stuff like that. Anyway, thanks for all the help, and I'm looking forward to hearing what y'all have to say on the topic. Thank you. Dan. 
I would totally look into some flip top carts so you could uh, utilize that space a little bit better. Pete's made a few flip top carts. Yeah, 23 of them. 23 of them. <laughs> and as far as insulation and stuff like that goes, I, I guess that really depends on where he's located in the country, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any place where you're going to kind of regret insulation, though. Well, yeah, yeah that's north. true. I mean, it'll, it'll keep like it San cool. Diego. It'll keep it... <laughs> like, I, he specifically said, or stick with the heating and AC unit, which I'm, makes me think that he's already got a heating and AC unit, which insulation is just going to make that better. And it's not you're still that gonna expensive. Need it. It's not like insulation yeah. is just going to If it's a 12 by 20 heat. space, that's, that's even a decent size I mean, you're talking... I mean, you. That's. Do you throw a wall AC unit in there? Go cut a hole. It's a shed. But yeah, I think I, Mike is right. Like, well, well, the insulation for my whole shop was three bags of insulation. That's, it was what? like two hundred fifty bucks, I think, is what it would cost. I, I don't remember. Throw up some drywall. You don't even have to tape it or some. I wouldn't plywood do drywall or, myself. I for a shop, I would plywood. do plywood. But plywood. But right like now, Mike said, you'll expensive. never regret doing insulation. Yeah, it's not like you'd be like, man, I wish I hadn't put that insulation in. No, no. It's just so temperate and feels so good in here. <laughs> it's the worst. Why did I do that? Yeah, totally do insulation. Yeah, I would definitely do insulation. Yeah. And and get up, you know, get some panels on the wall. Go for some plywood. Even though it's expensive, I wouldn't go with jip. Um, and I would really go with three-quarter inch ply. I'm really glad I did that in the other shop. So. Yeah, because that makes it to where you can hang up stuff anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to find a stud everywhere. I mean, you can't hang like... You and know, the heaviest stuff. Ellis, if you're trying to this plain devil's advocate here. Are you gonna make a stud joke? No. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, no. Not, it's Continue. not funny. This Continue. is serious. Uh I have seen people clad their walls with eighth inch ply. No, I'm sorry, uh eighth inch, quarter inch ply. Sorry, quarter inch ply. Just like so put it up. Just so like, when they sneeze the wall blows up? No, I mean like listen, when you if you I'll got sixty one center studs, it does provide and it you know, you got the insulation behind it, it provides enough. It, it's nice enough because it's still it's yeah it's quarter of an inch but if you got a couple of screws into that even if you miss a stud it still holds pretty well it's not ideal you're not putting anything super heavy on it but it does hold and will do the job and the only reason I'm bringing it up is because I've seen it done it's not the best but we're talking shed here it's not really like inside your house or shed or or like a, a no it should it shop. should totally double as a bomb shelter yeah but it's just another option you know three quarter inch ply hundred percent. I agree. That's the the way to go because you can just put anything everywhere and it would hold for forever. decades. For decades, <laughs> uh, bomb shelter. But no, sorry, cut, we this both got you off. Dan's dance. Yeah, damn, they keep going though. He's also no. asked about uh, other bench top tools bench top and, tools, like and multi purpose tools. Covered like that. I covered everything. Cover. We we, yeah. we kind of roundtabled this. I kind of yeah. like the way we did it. Yeah, that was fun. Let we talk about the other tools though. Uh, I think if you're in that you're in that size shop, I think a plan a joint or planer combo is a really great idea. That's the one time I'd say, yeah. Um, yeah, I otherwise wouldn't necessarily agree. Um, but but if you got a bench top jointer and a bench top planer, you could put it on a flip cart. Yes, I just really don't recommend a bench top jointer to anyone. Well, I, I mean, either. it's like the I know that like they're cheaper, but they're just not. Re I mean, it's not really a jointer. It's like a small bandsaw. They're not really a bandsaw. Get. I mean, it's just not long enough to be accurate for long boards. I mean, honestly, if, you, if you're doing a combo machine, go that route. But if he's in a small shed, it's not he's doing a 14 foot walnut desk. You know what I mean? True. Because oh, the combos less. are usually what 10 inches, right? It's no, a there's a 10, there's a 12, there's a 16. But there isn't a, an, is there an eight? I don't no, think so, right? No. So yeah, so that's actually that's a decent sized planer. 10 is not very big, but it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's it's okay. But if you're jointing, oh, I'm sorry. Stuff. It's a decent sized joiner, and it's a okay ten is a good sized joiner, yeah. and it's a and it's okay an okay planer. planer. That you're basically in that that kind of yeah. realm. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a big fan of combo machines, but I think that this is one situation where like I'm not either. Like but it's not an option. I mean, it, it is a really good solution for a lot of people. I mean, if you don't, if you're tight on space, it's a good solution. But also, joiners kind of tuck up against the wall, so if you get a nice little small joiner, <laughs> <six inch. laughs> I mean, realistically, I don't flip top cart. I agree with Dan. I mean, that seven thirty five, it's a banshee, but man, that is a really yeah. good value for a planer. Um, it's a twelve and a half inch one. It's not terrible. It's it's fine. Seven thirty four. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. No, I mean, it's not ideal, but they're they're cheap. You can get them. They're all, all over Craigslist. They're, they're not bad. They do away. fine. It's a planer, nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, it's not a it's a two blade planer, if I remember straight. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Um, but anyway. I mean, if you get a flip-top cart and you get a regular size jointer, I mean, for me, I know these guys don't agree necessarily, but for me, like, every project starts at the jointer. Um, I just, it's a very important tool to me. We believe I, you know. 
What? We, we have proper joiners. We believe oh. in you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, every every single project. Yeah. I'm gonna as soon as I mill up this redwood for this project, it's going straight to the joiner, and everything's gonna start there. You ready to get mad at me? No. The barn doors I made. Uh huh. I made them out of two by sixes. I cut them all down, and I started at the jointer. Yeah, and they were perfect. When I do yeah. two by sixes on the jointer, I've done that. I've like done that construction for... grade two by six. Yeah, you run them through. I've done that for sure for shop furniture. That's how I did the the uh, tortoise box. The tortoise <laughs> box frame was pine. I mean, it wasn't construction grade, yeah. but um, no, actually, no, that's not true. the the uh, the str- The stringers between all the legs are all construction grade pine. So yeah, I mean, but it I work, think it fine. makes your tool all dirty and covered in grossness. That's but, the downside. But it, but if, it, but it, it makes terrible wor- wood workable. Yeah, so, I think quality of life stuff. Like, if, if you're like, all right, I only have this sum of money, and I have to invest in one thing, insulation, because that's going to let you be in there all year round. With for me, like you, you need to, fo- you need to, for me, in my opinion, is you need to focus your attention on your table saw. I really do think. A jointer is very important. I really do think it is. And a bandsaw. A 735 or even like a cheaper planer that you can find used, as long as you maintain it, will probably do just a fine job if you get like a 12 inch or 13 inch yeah. planer. And you can put that on a flip top cart with that that rigid spindle sander. You know, it really is a pretty decent value. You're not going to be able to build like everything on it, but it's just fine. I mean, it's fine. It's a fine tool, but. You know, I had mine break three times on me, and I was just kind of tired of it. So, um, mileage may vary, but yeah, I think those bench top tools are really good. You can get really far with them, and flip tops are really great. So, um, anyway, we, we kind of beat that to death. Sorry yeah. about that, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, this next question is from a listener, and his name is Mike Sibley of Mike Sibley Woodworks. And here's his here's his voicemail. Oh my God, what was that about? I don't know. This is Mike at Sibley Manor Woodworks, Louisiana. And I was just listening to your most recent podcast, and y'all hinted in there that um, maybe next episode y'all will be discussing Fusion 360 and some of their licensing changes. And um, I'm anxious to hear a lot about that because over the last year, I've kind of piddled with SketchUp a lot. And kind of slowly started to learn how to use that program and then I learned about Fusion 360 and its advantages that it had over SketchUp so since I didn't know much about SketchUp I figured I'd go ahead and drop the SketchUp uh, efforts and switch over to learning Fusion 360 so after doing that for on and off for a month or so and having all kind of difficulty in learning that new software then all this came about so at this point, I'm really kind of curious whether or not you guys would feel that it's more appropriate to just, since I don't know either one very well, just to go ahead and drop the Fusion 360 efforts, go back to my efforts at SketchUp. Um, and also, one of the things, assuming that I do stay where y'all have recommendations, would be to stay with Fusion 360. I found that it's kind of difficult to get assistance, especially since using the free version, it's not like I can call their tech support and ask them how to get the thing to work with my Axiom CNC machine and things like that. So if you have any recommendations on how you can get uh, support or community efforts and getting questions answered with Fusion as a newbie, uh, I appreciate that as well. All right, well, thanks again, and um, enjoy the podcast a lot, so keep it up. Dan, uh, I'm probably just gonna take a nap while you guys answer this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go real quick. So yeah. me and Pete uh, shouldn't really. So there's a guy named Brandon Collum. He has what it's Make or Break Shop, mm-hmm. and I actually purchased his his courses on how to use Fusion. Uh, I will speak for Pete real quick and say me and Pete both bought the full version of Fusion, and if you have an avid CNC. They're Axi- having a forty percent, huh? Axiom, right? Isn't that what he said? Axiom. But yeah. Either way, if you have an axiom, he, I think you're right. He did say axiom. But if you have any CNC, I think you're gonna want to. I don't even know what the advantage would be from. I mean, I guess you can use a SketchUp file straight up. Yeah, you can use SketchUp yeah, straight up too. You can. Yeah. Um, I, am, I think there's some plugins for it. Yeah, yeah but you gotta put I, honestly, in. like Fusion is a full featured program, and they keep neutering SketchUp. 
Um, but here's the thing. Me and Pete can't really answer your question as to whether or not Autodesk like neutered Fusion to where it's useless. But Brandon can, and he actually put out a video last week. So I'm gonna have Pete. Yeah. So I'm gonna have Pete put the link in the in the description. It's it's Brandon's most recent video from the Make or Break shop. It's it's titled "Did Autodesk Just Kill the Free Version?" And I haven't actually watched the video. Probably should have, but it's been a pretty busy week. Uh, but from what I hear from people, it doesn't seem like the free version's really killed. It kind of affected. You basically can't have ten more than ten sketches open at a time. Uh, um, ten active projects. Ten active projects at a time. So you can you can have multiple projects, but essentially the way it is is you have to archive a project, and it goes into archives, and then you can activate another project or start a new one. Mm. So you could technically have more, but there's just a lot of hoops to jump through. Yeah, each they're time making you it difficult. It. They're putting a, a gate. Yeah. In it, but but Brandon's video probably goes into it because Brandon knows a lot about it. So I recommend watching that video, and I did not want to miss out on the 40% off sale because I knew I'd kick myself in like two months mm -hmm. as I get more down the road with the CNC. So I think it's just going to be very valuable to have if you're going to have a CNC. Yeah. But you probably have some sort of other program. I would assume Vectric, VCarve, VCarve Pro, or Aspire if you have a Axiom, but I don't know what you have. I mean, here's the way I look at it is... This is this is a re, this is a program that technically has always been hundreds of dollars a year or like thousands, right? Yeah. For just outright purchase in the past too. And it's worth every penny. Mm -hmm. You know, we, Mike and I I mean, I personally I have made the amount that this will cost me per year right now, especially at the 40% off sale, I have to jump on it. It's I think a 260 70 so 200 something like that. You Savings? Know? Uh, no, the, uh, how much it costs per year. I think it was like two oh, something. Oh, you got to pay that every no, year? No, um, the, the 40% off. I think. Oh, right now. Year. Yeah, but that's only for this one offer. I mean, for the one For the one year. Next so year, we're going to have to pay full price. You could have gone with, although I'm hoping that they'll do so. So it is. Yeah, um, it's not a one off buy. It's a yearly subscription. It's, it's a crazy. monthly. So I just found So it's $60 a month. Yes. And if you're a large company, and honestly. That's nothing. If let's say you're pumping out projects constantly and right. you're using it every single day. Sixty dollars a month. It's no. That's, that's just a tiny a business, business expense. Right. That's a tiny business. Yeah, you expense. really do need to think about it in a bigger scale. Like, what is your goal with your CNC machine? Yeah. If you're just wanting to play around and dick around, yeah, maybe sixty bucks doesn't make sense. Yeah, but doesn't seem but like you buy market. an axiom. But you probably wouldn't buy an axiom if you're kind of yeah. just screwing you're, around. If you're in that yeah. tier of CNC, yeah. you're not just screwing around, or unless you've just what do they call that? Not professional, not hobby, but um, it's, um, enthusiast. No, no, no. no. There's like they, they call, call those machines something else. Pro, semi pro. You think of that. So let me take him through the main matter. tier. So it's <laughs> it's usually almost a five hundred dollar a year license now. Currently, it is on sale for two ninety seven. That's what it was. Or you can get three years outright right now at forty percent off. Uh, about I think so. It's eight. No, it's actually less. It's eight hundred dollars for three years. Ugh. So it's about two hundred and sixty bucks, something like that, a year. And like you're like that's a big amount. That's a large amount. That's a, half a, of the entry level CNCs. Uh, but the thing is, if this is a business, if you're continuing this, you know you're going to be doing this for a couple of years. That's not, I mean, I, the $300 to me, like, that's a lot. That's, that's not a little money to me. No. But at the same time, this program, I, I'm acknowledging, has helped me make multiple times that amount. So, like, that's the least I can do is pay for it. It is worth it. And not only are they, so everyone's like, oh, they're neutering the program. Like, no, they're actually... Adding features starting November as well. There's a couple little things that they're throwing in there uh, for the paid version, and the the free version is still there for you to use. It's kind of like when people are like harping on SketchUp when they monetize it and stuff. Yeah, like, but you know, there's a lot of features there that were offered for free. Somebody had to put hours into it. It's just like when you support another maker. Like I get that this is a bigger company, but they're putting work into this, and this is making you money. You, you might as well pay for it. We're just kind of been spoiled, I think, by getting it for free. Question. Yeah. Let's pretend <clears throat> hypothetically that uh, I'm looking at getting a CNC. Mm -hmm. Can I use Microsoft Paint? <laughs> no, you cannot. Because oh. you can't export the file out as Damn. a drawing. It's not a vector. But there are... So here's the thing. There's a lot of different options. We, uh, Mike and I just recently discovered Affinity Design, which lets you create vector files which is uh, 
basically file like drawing files or sketch files that you can then export as a DXF or uh, even PDF or some other ones that we can put into our uh, CNC. It's like we, we use a why am I blanking on the name? Aspire. Vcarve Aspire. Thank you. We use Aspire to then run it to our CNCs. So we're using a twenty dollar iPad software that we use with our iPad Pros and a pencil, and you can draw stuff out to then export to that. Or you can use Fusion. Or but whatever. to be clear, you can't just use that vector program <clears throat> to run a file on your no, CNC. No, no, no. You still you need... still need program that can turn that into G code. G code exactly. Yeah. So I can't use Microsoft Paint. You can't. No. Sorry. I mean, at the end of the day, you still need a program that actually runs. All right, it. I'm gonna go back to my nap. <laughs> yeah. But is it worth it? It's absolutely worth it if you're actually in that tier. If you are not using it, but you're just kind of messing around with it once in a while, use the, the free version. You know, it's personal use. It's not, it's not neutered. They're just, you're getting a ton of free features. Yeah, I, I think since I don't have the free version and I do have the paid version, I'm probably not going to watch Brandon's inf- Brandon's video because I have the, the paid version. Still going to put it in the show notes. It'll be in there. But yeah, Pete, put we'll it in the show notes. So if you're, if you're curious about that, go check out Brandon because... You know, I, I do support Brandon. He's doing good things over there, and he's really helping make Fusion more attainable. So, also, you know, this is completely unsponsored, but I bought those classes. I really can't remember how much they cost, um, but they were, I'll tell you right now. Um, <clears throat> but it's worth it. But they were worth every penny to me because I jump in there every once in a while, and I need a refresher course, and he does a very good job. Now that I'm, now I'm trying to get in there more... And um, and he actually also has a podcast, but I'm trying to get in there more. Make a I don't, break, make shop. a break, yeah, make a break shop, yep. Podcast. So um, so it's a hundred bucks, it looks like, and I think you can find codes everywhere mm. to get thirty percent off that, and I'm pretty sure that's what I did. I know that I think we built a thing has a code for that. Uh, Jonathan Katz Moses has one. I think Brandon Walker has one. There's they're, they're all over the place, and if you can't find one, then just ask me or someone and we'll try to find it for you one of his other questions was is there other resources out there for him to learn stuff like for free and you could probably find mm-hmm. forums all over the place like yeah. i'm i'm almost dead certain there's a reddit a I'm, subreddit i'm for in Fusion. the cnc or I'm, facebook I'm, group i'm in the cnc subreddit and i'm in the fusion 360 subreddit yeah so you can you can just get files for free yep there's like, free people. licensed files that you can grab and the other thing is is you know it's what, you know, YouTube is probably the place I go the most for everything. And then, you know, if you know people who do this already, I'm fortunate enough to know Pete, my friend Ty, and then my buddy Bao. And then we got, I got guys that know how to do this stuff already. I can lean on them a bit and learn how to, these machines work. So um, reach out to people. Ask people questions who are already doing it. Yeah, there's one thing. is uh, pay attention to file export possibilities as far as applications go because that's really what makes it. It's what what the application you're using to do the carving, to send the G-code, what it, what does that need to drop in there? And then find applications that you're able to make drawings and export as that. I mean, Aspire is amazing because you can you could literally take a PDF and drop in a PDF, and if it's got like floral design in there, it'll drop the floral design as just lines in there. And then you, you know, but that's a powerful software. It's obviously, it's expensive for a reason because it, it pays for itself over time. But you got to be at that tier. It's the same thing. But there are plenty of free options where you can you just get files completely finished and then drop them into even like Carbide Create or uh, Easel and just just cut them, just carve them. That's it. You know, I think um, people are hesitant to spend money on things sometimes, and I totally get that. Totally get that. But um, and you know, it's so easy to say you got to spend money to make money. Sometimes you got to spend some money to make some money. I mean, yeah. that's kind of the bottom line. Like, if you really want to make, like, you know, sometimes you got to drop, like, 30 bucks or 100 bucks to make, you know, to me it's not 500 even extra that. bucks. To me, I finally, I, I've always been a do-it-myself guy. I'll do my website. I'll do it like this. I'll do that. Like, I'm not going to pay anyone for that. I'm finally at that point in my life where, like, time is money. I don't, I can't make more time. Yeah. I just have so much time. And this is saving me hours per project. It's paying for itself. Yeah. Like a CNC will pay for itself. Make CNCs good just for milling up a cookie instead of him sitting there for six hours with a sled. We we need to do that cookie. Oh, we'll do the cookie. <laughs> we just remember that we have to. No, do I cookie. need to go do that. Like, but like, to, oh, it's too late now. Yeah, we'll do. Wait. Oh yeah. Wait. 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 Oh, I just remember something else. Yeah, yeah. Well, basically, like you know, like we'll milling up a cookie. Like he he throws it in a CNC, runs the file now, and it takes minutes instead of him doing it for hours. Yeah. It's time is money. Yeah. 
You know, that's it. That's, that's anyway. All. Let's just, let's just call Being that a one. dead horse. Uh, I think that's the end of the show, eh? That's all the questions? That's all Can the questions. Can I wake up now? Yeah, come yeah. on back. All right. Hey, hey Danny. We're at an hour and 15 minutes in. We thought this is going to be a faster one than oh, this. Oh, so. this is faster. Uh, Pete, I think you should do the outro. I will do the outro. So if you guys want to help support the show, the best way you can support it, I'm not going to ask you guys to sign up for Patreon. I'm not going to ask you to leave a voicemail at 754-225-5297 <laughs> or to, um, you know, do anything else. I'm just going to ask you to just spread the love. Share the podcast, tag us, tell your friends, you know, because uh, th- this is how we grow. The mm-hmm. more we grow, the more we're likely to do this. And if you want to check us out, you can obviously, you're going to see us in your podcast catcher, or maybe just somebody sent this, you this link. Uh, you can find us in, you know, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify. We're on, uh, what does Android use? I don't know. Uh, Google Play? Or Google, Google Play. Podcast? Like, yeah, Google Podcasts. Of course, we're on, we're all three of us, including the podcast. We're all on Instagram. We're all on YouTube. And we're, some of us are on TikTok. It's great. Uh, check out all of our new videos that dropped recently and will be dropping in the near future. Dan, no pressure. Um, I can do that. You just love that you one. can do that now. Yeah, now I can do that because <laughs> I actually have them. But yeah, You're a just, loser, Dan. Just share the podcast. That really, that helps us more than you guys would believe. Uh, it really is, it helps us grow. More people see it. And we're able to provide more content. Um, if you do want some behind-the-scenes content, check us out on Patreon. That'd be great. Or more importantly, if you want to send me a hat, you can do that too. Reach <laughs> out to me, and uh, I'll tell you where to send it. And uh, hopefully, by the time some of you are listening to this, we uh, we did a lot of elbow bumps at a meetup in Stockton at Macbeth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, I think that's all we got, guys. Yeah. Give us those five-star reviews. Yeah. Just keep showing the love. Well, we love you guys a lot. Yeah, oh, you did? Yeah, okay. 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 No okay. reviews, guys. No reviews this week. All right. No reviews. Reviews only. Just kidding. Do the reviews. <laughs> Please do reviews. Uh, all right. Great. Let's uh, let's wrap this thing up. Yeah. Uh, this has been different and super fun. Yeah, this, this has been nice. fun. Let's We're do this every week. You guys will fly here every week. Okay. Yeah, well, no, we'll I don't like the looking in each other's eyes thing. <laughs> Next time, really we'll sit like there. All right, 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 right. Okay. All right. Love you, bye. Love you, long time.